Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? I think it probably still remains to be seen. If he does anything, I wouldn't expect it to be a lot. Our focus is getting him ready for training camp. And uh, I think that's where myself, him, really our, our whole organization, that's really what our focus is, getting him ready to go for training camp. So I, I like where he's at. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Michael Thomas on the field for OTAs on Tuesday. Our friend Maddie Hudak was there, and she's good enough to join us now. Maddie, how are you? I'm doing good. It was honestly kind of like seeing a unicorn today when he just kind of stumbled onto the field midway through uh, the start of drills. <laughs> was it um, – and look, you did our camp reports last year. And the same thing happened at camp, right? I mean, it was just no one really knew, and then the first day of camp, boom, there he was. I and mean, was it similar? I would say it was a lot more progressed probably in his – timeline this time last year he wasn't actually participating in really any of the drills with the receivers but he was doing the reps behind them and it looks like he's taken some time to work on his cutting off the line of scrimmage you know Derek Carr had talked after practice how he's just such a violent player and asking him to tone that down is probably just never going to happen talking about his injury proneness kind of how people talk about Zion potentially changing his style of play but I think he's kind of got more agility off the line of scrimmage that we'll see he's leaning into his hips more and less into his feet. And that might be a good thing for him, but they had all just kind of worked with him individually for a while. And that's something you really don't ever see with just one wide receiver, but it just really, I think goes to show how important that role of Michael Thomas is to this offense, especially with Carr saying after practice that he was a large reason why he decided to come here. Mm. Uh, it was either way. It shows progress, which is great to see. Can you sort of just divulge what like what they did, what he did, how much he did today? Yeah, again, um, the drills that he was doing was when, yeah, after the wide receivers had just run the drill that he wasn't participating in, but was doing it behind them, essentially mirroring their movements. When the wide receivers all went off to continue position drills and the quarterbacks normally would just be working by themselves, they all actually were, were throwing a Michael Thomas, wasn't doing any third level routes which is something that we saw him do in camp last year and that stood out so it's kind of those crossing routes but you could just see how immediately he kind of gets back to that competitive drive really hit his hands just getting to the ball before his body even gets there he really just has a knack for it and you can tell that he has immediate chemistry with all these guys but it was really just that light work of just that kind of one-on-one -on -one time uh what was most surprising to all of us really was getting to talk to him after practice um and here, I think really how far along he is from the mental recovery of his injury and what he did in that time off to really work on himself. And again, you could just tell in his initial footwork off the line of scrimmage proverbially today that that is something he's really fine-tuned in his game. Uh, if nothing else, it was just good to see that progress and to see him out there. Um, if we move off of Michael Thomas and sort of cover the, the rest of the day, can you can you tell us just sort of, how the day was structured, at least the parts that you all were able to see? Yeah, we actually got to see a lot today compared to other days. We had to go inside once the uh, seven-on-seven drill started because the unsurprising lightning siren that sounds like a death <laughs> siren all uh, went off as we were watching the black clouds uh, form over us the whole time. But we you know, do the individual position work outside. But we saw a lot of red zone work today, and that was really valuable to see a, what Derek Carr kind of prefers and those kind of plays because the red zone was just not a great position of strength in the Saints last year. It was one of the only times that they would actually use Taysom Hill was just kind of to run in touchdowns. But to see just an infusion of creativity back into the offense, see the tight ends really kind of take on a primary role in the offense, which has been a point of extreme weakness for this team for a while. But Derek Carr, you could just tell he's automatically upgraded the pedigree of the wide receivers and the tight ends. And it was probably the most competitive day we've seen with a lot of back and forth, a lot of pass breakups on the defense and chirping and the like. But primarily focused on that red zone drill today was really insightful. A lot of touchdowns by both Derek Carr and Jameis Winston, who really looked strong today and honestly stronger 
than he did, uh, you know, as a starter at this time in camp last year. Yeah, health obviously got to be a, a, a big part of that. Yeah. Um, well, I, look, in camp, obviously he was healthy last year, though. Uh, Matty Hudak is with us. Um, a- anybody else on the offensive side stand stand out today? Uh, Chris Olave, we, we've all said you know, he's probably win some, for, again, fake award for being the standout, but I think what he did last year, it's just incredible to kind of think back on because he's not the size of Michael Thomas. He can't just kind of bully his way into being the only option the way that Michael Thomas did when past him there really was not much depth at wide receiver. And it was all on Olave last year. But, again, just to see him really step into that first option role as a second-year player and take on really that, that Michael Thomas role in the offense and have immediate chemistry with all these guys his game just has already improved, and it's, his mental processing to me and his assimilation to the pro really translated. But the tight ends between Foster Moreau and Jawan Johnson, Jawan Johnson has really looked like a credible tight end this year, kind of working through that transition from wide receiver. But I think a lot of it does tie back to Derek Carr and the fact that we've talked about that he'll really take the time. And it really seems to be individualized where – He'll throw, and even if it's a touchdown, he'll still break it down with Juwan Johnson. Did you like where I threw it? Should I be anticipating that more? And as much as mm. he doesn't want to compare himself to Drew Brees, Michael Thomas immediately did so in the way that he demands attention in the huddle, his discipline, the way that he approaches film study. And then to hear Carr afterwards and how we'll, you know he was sending Michael Thomas clips to film he was watching, asking him this, that, and the other. I think a lot of positions groups have looked better, but the last two off seasons, it felt very limited because of the play at quarterback. And I think we're really seeing how a important a serviceable quarterback is, but maybe that a lot of these position groups weren't as bad as we thought. Mm-hmm. It's it just almost kind of needing that group breeze effect. It's someone that's able to lead and anticipate and really see each one for their strengths in a way that Carr has already shown really the ability to do so early on. Maddie, can you elaborate a little more on tight end? You mentioned Johnson looking good. Foster Morrow has obviously been a a huge talking point, but then, of course, signing Jesse James as well. Uh, Just how that group is looking? Yeah, uh, Jesse James, there's a lot more of him today. Foster Morrow, I I don't think he was participating. um, wasn't really expanded upon, but you, you could just tell that that's Derek Carr's guy immediately. And the offense, I think it's a lot more reminiscent of that Drew Brees system with kind of those short crossing route, quick release type things. I, I think the tight end routes a lot of the time last year might have been just a little too complex, but it's all honestly just been really simplified, short level routes, but their hands have just looked better. It's really just been those two that have really stood out the most between Morrow and Jawan Johnson. But again, Jesse James did step into that, that role today including a lot more passes to running backs on top of that. I, not that those two groups are similar, but just utilizing another group other than just the skill set of wide receivers. Jamal uh, Williams got a lot of work today with his kind of soft touch passes that I, I think this offense struggled with last year. And that also kind of applies to, I think, a lot of the struggles with tight ends. And you don't really you know miss Adam Trotman at all, but it just kind of goes to show that that was kind of the situation they were looking at last year where we were trying to, rationalize that a lot of Adam Stotman and you can just tell between Moreau and Johnson that that position really is set in a one-two punch. Yeah. A couple more here uh, here for you. Maddie Hudak is with us. She's on Twitter at Maddie Hudak underscore 94. I want to flip it over and ask two defensive questions. One, I, I am curious about uh, the safety spot. We learned Marcus May uh, is going to have his trial coming up this summer in July. He's facing what would be a minimum three-game suspension for DUI. Uh, what can you tell us about the depth at safety as it stands right now? They've had a lot of guys, including cornerbacks like Alonte Taylor, who they have played out quite a bit in the slot, worked in the initial position group drills with the safeties. But I really think it's going to be JT Gray. Because when you look back to, I was looking over this with Ross Jackson and thinking about last year, is there's no longer P.J. Williams, there's no longer Justin Evans, and those are really the depth that slotted in when Marcus May was injured last year. But JT Gray when my, Tyron Nassi wasn't participating in OTA, he did today. That's where JT Gray slotted in. So presumably him, but honestly, after that, I think it's pretty wide open. We've seen guys make plays some days or another, you know, smoke Mondays back in the mix, but it, it is a question mark. And like you said, it's something that's coming up. I don't know if they're working on, is, we asked kind of about Alante Taylor in the slot. And I think Dennis Allen's, comments about him could really apply to all the secondary members where the more versatility they can give them 
the better that they have of, of getting all the best 11 players on the field in the way that uses their skill sets. But, you know, at this point, Alante Taylor is too good to leave off the field. But you also have Bradley Roby going on there. Who's one of them goes to safety. Plus, it's been interesting to see kind of this group of almost 10 guys be in that safety position group, including cornerbacks you normally wouldn't see there. So I think the starting option would be J.T. Gray, but outside of that, it is definitely a question mark. You you shot me a note that um, that Zach Vaughn was working maybe in a different role. Um, what, <laughs> Matthew, what are they doing? What are they doing with this I, guy? I, I don't know, man. Like Because <laughs> you just think about what the, the uh, permanent vision was for him being an off-ball linebacker, using him more as a rusher off the edge, because that's what he did in college, and then they just haven't uh, has, has not happened at all. And granted, the unfortunately, I think the only time he got real game action was that Miami Dolphins COVID game where Ian Book saw his life flash before his eyes several times. Yeah. But it just doesn't seem like the mental aspect of things has clicked for him, and now he's able to read things. I, I remember there's during the quarterback competition, Jameis Winston had basically thrown a ball out of space and he blocked it because he just kind of seemed to be lacking the situational awareness. But, you know, they lost Caden Ellis and Demario mm. Davis largely isn't participating in a lot of OTAs. So it's just Pete Werner out there. And it is kind of, it kind of made you realize quickly, okay, well, what happens if Pete Werner or Demario Davis gets hurt? But it's the amount of coverage time that Zach Vaughn has spent in the slot role. And part of that might just be installed that they're working on the 4-3 defense, what would this look like? Because a lot of the time we've seen them in 7-on-7 seven seven or whatever with Alante Taylor playing that slot role and another player at cornerback, where that's where Taylor was today when Zach Baum is in the slot at corner, but he spent the entire time working at the slot. So we saw Pete Werner actually get tried out in the slot last year quite a bit and they never used that way. But Zach bomb has been almost the field, on the field almost as a starter every single time. So I don't know what the role for him is yet. And I don't really see the differentiating skill sets of him, but I think it's a warm bodies thing more than anything else. I just don't think, quite honestly, that a linebacker is the best option for a slot. Either way, you really have to have a guy like Pete Warner who has such a quick cerebral understanding, I think, of the game and that quick reaction time that I just, uh, at least you haven't seen him that gone up to this point. Maddie, I'm proud of you. Our first interview of uh, the Saints offseason, and uh, no beeps. Again, the AirPods. I got shamed <laughs> into that purchase real quick. It's been very worth it to have my phone held five feet from my face in the loose. Uh, good stuff, Maddie. Thanks as always. All right. Thank you, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.